you're no longer needed to use a slow setting monomer unless you're really used to it. So an EMA monomer will give us a nice speed. You see there's no marbling. When you place it, it's gonna be nice and dry, correct? You see that? You'll be able to work with the powder without it actually drying up on you. This is one of the benefits of working with an EMA monomer, something medium setting. It may seem like it's dry, but if you put light pressure, you'll be able to move the powder how you want it. And one of the things is you will have less ability to have the powder running all over the nail. Now, a lot of times if you don't, I don't have enough powder for this bead. I should have picked a bigger bead, but as you can see, I'll do the demo again with another swatch stick where I'll pick up a bigger bead. But just notice there's no marbling in the powder. Generally, neon powders like this will always have somewhat of a marbling effect. That's one of the benefits of using EMA powder. Also, you know, chisel, they mix their powder pretty well. So it's very nice and pigmented. And this powder will dry. It won't, it won't run to the issue where it won't dry. So of course, I'm gonna pick up a bigger bead because you know, I'm so used to using a 16, so I'm just using 12. So now I have a bigger bead. See that? When you place anything with a medium setting monomer, it'll just sit. As it sits, we can still work with it. You see that? Once I start working with my brush, the powder will start to move. This gives a lot of benefits because I don't have to worry about the powder moving to the side, dripping, but ability to just go right down the nail with nice brush strokes. And that, my friends, is easy application. A lot of times we run into issues where the powder will be running all over the place. Um, with the great powder, with the right monomer, um, when I, when I formulated this monomer, I wanted to make sure that it's not gonna be runny, but it's not gonna be too dry. I'm gonna make sure that this monomer actually works with a lot of powders. I use a lot of chisel, a lot of wave gel, and a lot of um, not polish, so it's very, some very popular brands out there right now. So if it works with their brand, it should work with any brand. I haven't ran into any issues with any of my students or any people that bought my monomer that didn't work with any powder they used because it's medium, it's right in the standard form. If you use, um, um, I'm not let's just try not polish. It's gonna be the same consistency. And I picked the neat. I picked the really pigmented colors to show you guys. Like these are colors that you would, we would dread, right? Um, it would just marble, marble, marble. Everybody, you know. Um, C and D retention is also a slow setting monomer, Mariah. Um, that's a very slow setting monomer. I've I've used it before, and so may have a little bit of a blue pigment in here, but same with not polish. Same consistency. That the monomer. It's very compatible with the powder. Won't move until I, I want it to move. So yes, this monomer, a lot of people get afraid because it's the, this blue is from the, my, my, the, the pigment of the powder, uh, the monomer, so I can just brush that in. So a lot of people get really discouraged, like, oh, I don't want something that's more advanced. A medium setting is not really advanced, it just means that it gives you time, but also it won't be runny. I hate it when I put powder on and it's runny. As you can see, light, if you have a nice Kalinsky brush, I use my whole brush to brush through and it gives you a nice consistent bead like that. And I didn't have to worry about the powder. I used to use Mia Seeker back then and it just it would just drip to this side, that side, I have to catch it. But if you get the right ratio with the right monomer, you'll be able to get the same bead every time. And I'm using different powders from different companies. Now I'm gonna use Wave Gel. So these are three different companies that never even work with each other but with my monomer they all are the same consistency that's why i wanted to explain to a lot of nail techs that um when you're looking for a powder don't always jump into think like oh the powder is gonna be the main factor it's the monomer guys okay the monomer is always the main factor um yes the powder has the ability to help you out and these three companies formulate their powder differently but you see i pick up the same bead i place it the same and it's always the same consistency. Why is that? These three powders from these three companies, completely different companies, but still work the same, irregardless of what company I work with. It's because the monomer plays the main factor in this, this case. So when you have the right monomer that's best for you, anybody that's more advanced would not be using a, a running monomer. You don't want to sit there and wait for the powder to run all over the place, right? No, of course not. So if we switch our focus to over trying to pick up powders. Of course, you support the brand that, you know, supports you. I always recommend support the brand that you love, but at the end of the day, you know, you gotta, don't be too, uh, um, 
um, dependent on the one brand because you want these companies to compete with each other. Because there's no way that these three powders can have the same consistency if these companies didn't compete with each other to get the powder to be this level, okay? So with the right monomer, you definitely will be able to do pretty much everything. So I did three separate companies, three separate beads, but as you see the, my laying, there is no marbling in this, not one bit. This is a neon blue, hot pink, three different companies, no marbling. How is that? The only thing you can think about is the monomer. That's why I really, that's why a lot of people tell me get my own powder. I don't really want my own powder because I, of course I can't produce my own powder, but why when there's so many great companies out there right now that are way ahead of the powder game, but I want is, I want my own monomer. As long as the monomer is, works, I can work with any brand, any company that I want, and that goes for everything. So chisel, wave gel, and um, matte polish are one of the big threes right now um, on the market. Of course, you got Valentino and Young Nails also. I don't have any of their products on me, but if I were to use their products right now, it would be the same consistency. I was using Young Nails, I feel like the monomer was too watery. I wanted to tap, tap, tap instead of glass and brush. Um, if you guys notice all of Not Young Nails um, tutorials, whenever they pick up the powder and they put the powder on, what, do, what does it do? They tilt it and it just runs, right? They don't have the ability to brush the powder in because their monomer, like I told you, is a runny monomer um, at the end of the day. You cannot take a Young Nails uh, a bead, pick up a bead with their monomer, like this big, place it and sit there. You can't, you simply can't because their monomer, the first thing it's gonna do is gonna react to the it's gonna to react to the powder and it's gonna just it would just run all over the place. That's why a lot of Young Nails um, tutorials, it just shows the powder just running down and they stop it right at the end. Cause they're not allowed, they're not able to brush in lightly like this. You know, if they were to brush like this, there's no way because it would be too runny and the powder would just glide right through the nail and it would be really inconsistent. That's why you need a medium setting monomer. As you can see, very easy control. Our acrylic brush is used to brush guys, not to tap. I don't knock on people for their technique, but I really believe that we should, the brush is used for you to brush the powder. When you brush this powder, it's gonna be very nice and smooth. It's gonna caress the powder. It's gonna give you nice structure. It's gonna give you everything you need. But when you're tapping it while it's still wet, you're causing trauma to it. So it's gonna be like, boom, powder's gonna go this way, that way, boom, 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 tap. You never get an even consistency like this unless you're brushing it. You see when you're brushing it, how the brushes glides over it? That's what you're looking for, okay? That's very important. I always tell my students, don't tap, don't leave the powder. Because what happens if we leave the powder and let it run down? Of course, gravity is gonna take control. Up here is gonna be thinner than down here, right? Because as the powder runs down, it starts to dry. So as it gets more dry towards the tip, what happens? It gets more thicker at the tip because it runs slower. So you can't get that consistency like when you're brushing when you're waiting the powder to be at the right al dente, I just like to say, and you brush lightly, that brush is gonna smoothly guide the powder through and give you that nice consistency, that nice set that you wanna do. And I'm not, I'm not saying this to knock on any, any product or any company. I'm just trying to bring awareness to show you guys that there's a lot difference in how you use these products um, and know what you're buying. Um, lot, there are companies that you know, their powder is very pigmented. So they need a very runny monomer so it doesn't marble. And that's just fine um, to have a nice and thin coated and then you have to cap it clear. That's Valentino. Valentino has been doing that for ages. That's how their, 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 um, their uh, supporters love that about it. So if that's not for you, then that's not for you. But I wanted to bring awareness and let you guys know that at the end of the day, you need to understand what you're buying and what you need. This is my monomer. Any powder you pick up with my monomer is gonna be like this. No matter what powder it is, because the monomer is gonna take over as, as the big beneficiary factor of that. And that's it. It took me a long time to figure out this monomer and try to figure out what I want with it. And I know I last thing I want, I've tried, don't, I'm not, I will never do a review on any product that I've never tried. So if I tell you, you know, how Valentino monomers, how Young Nails monomers, it's not me knocking it. I'm just telling you from my perspective as a nail tech in this industry for this long, well, how I feel about it and what it's generally used for. They, it's very product reliant. Um, Valentino monomer, of course, is gonna work well with their products. Why wouldn't someone make a, a monomer that works well with their products? So that comes hand in hand. 
So if that's how you like to do it, then great. But a lot of nail techs that come to this industry, they've never experienced it. They don't even understand the difference between a slow setting, medium setting, and fast setting monomer. They buy the brand and when you get it, and then you're like, oh, is this how this is supposed to be? I get questions like, hey, my monitor is very runny. My monitor is already this, my monitor is very that. What's wrong, what's wrong? There's nothing wrong with it. It's just how the product is, is set up. And if, you, if, it's not, if it's not for you, you don't have to be forced to use it because it's the brand. You need to find something that works best for you because every nail tech starts differently. Every nail tech have different techniques. They have different um, abilities. They have the different, you know, how they want to use it. Um, you know, to be, what color is this uh, not polished? I think this not polished color is the M01 Wink Baby. Um, please understand that variety of companies have variety of different, uh, different uh, products and variety of different ways how they market it. So, I mean, how Young Nail markets their, uh, their products is different, completely different than how, um, you know, uh, Chisel or how uh, Not Polished markets it. And you can just tell by watching their demo videos or watching people work with them, you know? Um, there's a, they have great support, which is fine, but does it mean that do you have to follow the bandwagon just because everybody's doing it? Everybody might not be you. You need to find what, the, what product is best for you. That's the same with me. I had to go and try Me A Secret, CND, uh, Young Nails, Valentino, before I can find out what's best for me or if I want to come up with a product and what's best for me. As you can see, I can do flawless application because you know why? My, 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 my liquid amount ratio is always the same. I always use the same technique and I pretty much, you know, found the monomer that works best for me. And I don't recommend switching out unless you're ready to. You need the consistency. You see the ability to move the powder through the nail like this, to have it nice and smooth. Okay. We need to be consistent with that. That's how we don't have to do a lot of filing and drilling. Ideally. You need, uh, I just wanted to show these three powders. I wish I had other powders to show you, but I think at the end of the day, um, Wave Jar Chisel and Not Polish, one of the big threes right now, I believe, and personally for me, um, is enough to prove to you guys that this, uh, like that monomer is the main factor, right? Of course, these three companies, they mix their powder completely different, but how is it that I can use it the same way? Because look, see these hands? This is the nail tech, okay? This is a product. This is a product. This is a product. Without this, your hands, this is nothing. Inanimate objects, powder, could be used for anything. So, you know, having the right brush, being able to control your ratio, having the right monitor to understand the, how fast you have to move it, how fast you have to work, that's important. That all depends on you. The knowledge of liquid to powder ratio, control, that's the nail tech. Great brands, great products. But if you cannot use these, if you don't have the technique to execute, then there's just any other powder out there, okay? And, you know, it's tough for me to say this because I, and there's a lot of people that love a certain brand, a lot of people that really like just stay by it, and that's just, that's perfectly fine. But at the end of the day, as a nail tech, it doesn't matter if you really wanna support a brand, if that brand is not for you, not fitting your style or at your level of work yet, then definitely it's not for you. Don't force yourself to use a runny monomer because you see everybody doing it and you want to support the brand. If you need a more slow setting monomer, um, you, if you need something that works best for you, then you need to seek out that. And you need to try different brands. I never tell any nail tech to stick with one brand forever. The only reason why I don't do that because as much as, you see me, I never ever stick to one brand. Um, I love working with all brands. I love the ability to have them send me stuff um, to be able to understand that I give honest reviews that I do demos, I have a, a following that likes it. I, I tell them, hey, listen, thanks for sending me this stuff, but I will do an honest review. And if I like it, I'll show it to my community and they can support you if they want. But I'm not gonna be one track minded to be like, oh, you sent me stuff. I have to just only use you. But there are also, they have their own brand ambassadors and use their own products. But for me, I wanna be able to give a universal look at it. I wanna be neutral and these brands, they respect that. So, I mean, they're great brands, so they don't have no worries about the competition. Um, competition is great for consumers like me and you um, that buy these products because if they compete, the product will get better and also the price will stay more manageable. We don't want a monopoly. But at the end of the day, um, if you have not tried my monomer, try it. Um, it's 100% EMA. It soaks down very well. Um, you will never have an issue with it. Um, I think it's one of the most cheapest EMA monomer out there in the market right now because I definitely could sell this for more, but I don't. 
Um, there are times when monomer, my monomer prices, the raw material has gone up. I didn't go up my prices because I really want everybody to try this at least once. And I think everybody that's tried my monomer has never gone back to any other monomer. And that I can guarantee you. Only 16 ounce right now, unfortunately. Um, I will go up in 32 ounce uh, in the future. The reason why I, have, I haven't gone up in, in, in uh, brush sizes in a while because I'm... Um, uh, Honest and truly, um, let's try some other colors, you know, since we're here, you know, um, since so I can show you guys that it's, it's not just, you know, uh, these colors I can use. Let's try some nudes and let's try some, uh, you know, uh, light pinks or something like that. Okay. So we've got a little more time here. I I'm, I'm feeling like having fun today. So let's grab some colors. So let's do a not polish, like a nice lavender, and let's do a wave gel light pink, and let's do a more nudie kind of peachy chisel, okay? Um, I'm gonna definitely change this monomer out because this monomer has probably been pig pigmented already. So now we're gonna switch on to the nudes and the lighter colors, and you'll see that it's not just the pigmented colors that works that well, it's also all colors, okay? So whenever I say something, I have to show it, okay? I can't just say something out of my ass, unfortunately. I know a lot of people would sit there and listen to me and I'm, I'm grateful, but I, I have to show it, you guys. You know, sometimes showing is believing. So this is a not polish, like a light lavender, wave gel light pink, and kind of a nude dark color from Chisel, like a peachy. Oh, these three colors probably look really good together. I did some kind of design, but I just picked it out of whim. Okay. Let's do that again. See? Same consistency. The reason why I like it, because um, if you have your ratio down, you'll never ever have issues with application. I mean beading. You can pick up a bead. Once you have your ratio down, that's it. You, your bead's gonna be the same consistent every time. I mean, I've probably done this thousands of times, so of course my ratio is down. I always encourage my students to also always uh, practice picking up beads. Sit there and pick up a bead for an hour a day until they pick up the perfect beads. Just like that. Even the light colors are the same. Usually the light color is a little bit different because there's more acrylic in here. So um, people run into issues where, uh, let's say there's, if there's more acrylic, then of course it's gonna be, it's gonna work, it's gonna dry faster because monomer dries acrylic, not pigment, okay? And this is the chisel. Same beading, I pick up the same bead every time, place down, same consistency. Wouldn't you love to drop a bead on a nail, a long nail, a long client, and be able to get it through, get the cuticles nice and flush, just like look, I flush the cuticles, and be able to pull the powder through, nice and even, nice and consistent, and I have any powder underneath the nail, and be done with a set in less than 15, 10 minutes. Just boom, one nail done. That was less than five seconds of application. Probably five to 10 seconds of application. Even thickness throughout the nail. Mia's Secret is definitely a slow setting. Mia's Secret is a slow setting. Mia's Secret is a very slow setting, okay? They're the very first slow setting monomer. It's very deep purple, um, it's very loud. Same bead every time I pick up a bead. Place it down, and it won't move. You better control the sides. Flush the cuticles. So we don't have a lot of cuticle. See? And then now, we're going to be able to move the powder through the nail. Slowly. When the powder is about medium consistent like this, light brush motions will, tra will distribute the powder evenly throughout the nail. Remember that brush motion I'm not tapping I'm not you know doing anything I like to use my brush to brush through the, the nail when the brush hits the brush if you have a good brush like mine 100% Kalinsky and it just glides through guys 
smooth. And what we left, we have left over is a nice even application throughout the whole nail. And let's say I wanted to build an apex. How would y'all do that? Easy. Let's build an apex. Nope, this is not not polish monomer. This is my own nail dad studio monomer. My medium setting. Um, for those that are beginners, even I use this in my classes. So I teach beginners with monomer and it still works. So, okay, let's say I wanted to do an apex. Okay. While I do a one beat application, I will definitely take care of my cuticles first. And I'll be able to position my powder in the middle. And where I need the apex, I will definitely will leave more powder there and I'll move the powder through the nail that I need. So that I know I leave more powder where my, the area I need it is the apex area. Now once the powder is getting more medium, I'll be able to reposition and I'll be able to gently move the powder up towards the apex area where I need it. I don't want the whole nail to bulge. And now the powder is more dry, so lighter pressure with the apex area, more pressure down where the base of the nail is. And voila, I have a thicker apex area, a thinner nail. You see, side to side, side by side comparison. One is flatter because I was just showing application. The other one a little bit more thicker in the apex area. That's control. So you'll be able to control the powder, leave powder where you need. You need a 32 ounce? I know. I'm, I'm working on it, guys. I'm trying to get the, the shipping down. Yep, you can purchase my monomer. Um, try it. 16 ounce. Not bad, you know, to try it. Um, my lot, like they get sold out all the time. Does the whole color? Um, the holding color for the color powder is not based on the liquid, it's based on the powder. Um, the reason why colors change sometimes is because the way they mix the pigment and that when you're in light or UV, it could change a shade or two. That's kind of unavoidable to be honest with you. Um, you run that situation all the time. Um, just know that. I'm here now, take about four years now, about two years I'm done, with, I'm not done with now. I did it myself, but I gave up because I can't get the texture right. I don't think this I don't think I should have gotten a pass. Can you give me some advice? Mm. I think if you didn't get the right texture, it means you haven't properly got control down yet. That's my advice is just practice your application. If you guys really need to practice application, you can sit there all day at home with a powder of your choosing and practice on these swatch sticks. They're just amazing. To be able to use your uh, your brush, like to, you want to you wanna practice, look at the powder ratio and control? Here, this is it. Picking up beads, you have a big service area for you to practice how to control your powder. I have my students do this in class all the time before they actually work on an actual mannequin hand or um, uh, on a person's hand for the salon ready courses. Because on my salon ready courses, they actually work on uh, real hands in there. And so I'm not gonna have them practice on a real hand and waste their time. They need to be able to get the control down. But once I see that they got the powder control down, then I can work on real hand and just Practice your application. And you can get through like hundreds of these. These are cheap. You can buy a bag of these off of Amazon, 160 of them for like 10 bucks. And you'll be able to practice that. The reason why I don't have my students practice on top of, um, I don't care about the apex really because I'm practicing how to control my powder. The reason why I don't have um, my students practice on a mannequin hand right away is because it takes a long time for them to prep the hand and get the tips on. And if they were to mess up, then they, can, they have to take a tip off of that. Um, I want them to be able to, when they switch to the mannequin hand or a real live hand, to be able to understand the control and to be able to be ready to be able to work with it. Um, so that's why I do that. Let me see some questions here. Mia Secret it smells bad. Yes, Mia Secret is a very loud monomer. Um, it definitely gave me a headache. That's why I stopped using it. Um, you can purchase a monomer in the pin link below, now that shop .com. Um, Press. This looks like it will 
make my life easier. <laughs> I'm like I said, guys. I'm just trying to show you guys what my students go through. A lot of my students, they they only when I got when my monitor was ready, um, they only use my monitor in class. Um, I, I told them straight up, like, uh, we're not we're not we're using only uh, my my monitor because I want them to get used to it. Um, and also we have a variety of sponsors, so definitely you know. Uh, my monomer works for all of them, so it's a great monomer. Um, it's definitely I'm gonna have it in 32 and possibly a gallon in the future. Um, I just got to think about the shipping. I don't want it to be much. And really, honest, truly, um, this, uh, I'm gonna look through some final questions uh, and I'm gonna answer some final questions here on the live. Okay, guys. Um, I noticed that you dip your brush in the monomer and then tap on the paper towel. Why is that? Um, whenever I after I place my bead, after I place my bead. Um, I clean the brush because I know there's gonna be residue on the brush. No matter how good your brush is, you're gonna have somewhat of residue or pigment. You wanna clean it before you go back into the monomer, or you can either, and you can either release this and the rest of the monomer. You want a nice wet brush, but not too wet because you don't wanna add more monomer onto the powder to make it more runny. So I kinda of like either I remove this. This is a, a habit of mine. So technically you're supposed to just get the brush wet again. So bead, clean your brush of all foreign agents so you don't put it back in the monomer, get in the monomer and have a nice kind of wettish dry brush so you can work with the powder so it's not sticky. You don't want it to stick, okay? Thank you, Liz. Is it better than not polished? Um, that's, I'm unsure. Um, if you've used not polished before and you like it, stay with it. But if you want to try it, I, I think you, you, you know, what's going to hurt? You're going to have two great monitors at the end of the day, right? So you're going to use it regardless. So good or not good, I, I know it's, it's a good monomer. So, you know, if you want to try it, try it. You've been using it since Kyle class? Dang, girl. Love the colors. Thank you, Jessica Pina. All right, guys. Uh, let me see if I missed any questions. But um, all in all, I wanted to do a quick... Uh, can I buy what? Um, no, unfortunately, I don't ship. We can't ship this international. Um, this is not my acrylics. You can purchase not polish, of course, from any local nail supply store, Chisel, Whip Gel also. These are the three major brands that you can purchase at local nail supply stores. There's a lot of online sites that sell them also, they, they contract to. Um, so definitely. Try it. Hey, if you purchase it and you try it, I guarantee you'll love it. And of course, like I said, we're gonna finish off with what's best is let me do one more application with apex since you guys like that so much okay one more okay and i'll show you guys how i do apex with one beating <laughs> i'm not flexing i'm just you know i'm just showing you guys i'm not trying to flex or anything okay um i'm just trying to show you guys what is important um what is the importance of mastery of application when you have your ratio down when you're able to know exactly how long you have to work with how to work with your nails. You can do everything in one fell swoop, okay? I will place my bead where the apex area is. I will nudge my powder forward to the cuticle area because I want to flush my cuticles, right? I clean my brush. I go into my monomer. Now I'm going to be able to leave more powder behind. I want to drag just the major half of the bead down to the base of the nail, okay? Now this is the powder is drying as I'm working and I'll know when it's dry and then I'll be able to work quicker and I'm gonna get down. Now I'll come back up and I'll be able to tap, finish my cuticle area up and I'll be able to m gradually move the powder forward a little bit because I don't want too much bulk by my cuticle area. Now the powder is dry enough for me to lightly move it and it'll blend in with my other bead because just there's less powder here. So I wanna blend it in to make sure I have a smooth transition. And if then I pray to the apex gods and I turn my nail and I should have a nice apex here, thinner tip here, and a nice slope effect up to the cuticle area so I don't have to drill too much later. So from here to here, you see the nice little bump there. And generally that's all you really need, guys. The nat this is a, a fake tip. A natural nail will have a nice apex from the natural nail, it will be more noticeable. And that literally, you I did that in what? less than 10 15 seconds because i do that every time that's understanding the liquid to powder ratio the products you're working with and also technique i am not afraid to show you guys what i just did there because it doesn't matter how much i show you guys you'll be able to see it but can you do it you have to practice that 
Um, I have had a few students in my past that have really, really, really surprised me when I teach them my technique and they just freaking absorb it like this paper towel with monomer. They absorb everything, you know? Um, and I see them working, they're like, wow, you guys really just stole my technique. And they're like, yes, we did. And I'm like, thank you. You know, I thank them because if I retire and I'm done doing nails, all this 10 years, 15 years I've been working nails to develop a technique, it's just gonna all go to waste. I wanna pass it down to other generation of nail techs to help them and you know, that's why I'm, I'm not afraid to do lives and show you guys what I do exactly and I'm not afraid to walk you guys through it. So at the end of the day, if you have the passion, you have the talent to be able to take it on and make it yourselves, it's free for you. And I appreciate all the support you guys have in the community. I know I haven't been doing a lot of lives lately because I've been working behind the scenes. I got a lot of things going on. Um, I want to finish up on some products and stuff like that. But um, I'm going to move over to YouTube tutorials a lot more now. Um, I'm going to start posting once I start the editing process. And clean your brushes, guys. Make sure you get the monomer after you do application. The best way, you can't look at your brush and be like, oh, it's clean, right? Because you never know what's inside. So I always take my hand, I flick her through like this. When you feel it, you'll feel, if you see it clumping up or sticking together, that means that there's acrylic inside the brush. But when you see it flicking like this, you know there's no acrylic, so that's, we're good to go. A little bit more monomer. This is all my brushes are crimped by me. You can be basically form it, shape it, and it'll stay this shape right here. It'll stay this shape, it's nice and clean. And then you store it, okay? And there we have it.